Now we'll take a, a look at a couple of queries that illustrate some interesting new features of SQL. Not new features, interesting new features in the sense that we haven't looked at these features before. Okay, so we're saying, here's the schema. We're saying for every registration, list the student first and last name. We can get that because registration says, what is the course, what is the section, who's the student. So we can join with the student table and get that along with the course name which is easy. We can join registrations with the course table on course ID, get the course name. Section name, it's there in registration itself. So there's no problem. And it says get the instructor first name and last name for the corresponding section of the registration. Okay. Now to get to the instructor, there's no direct linkage between registrations and instructor. Instead, what we see is from a registration, Given the course ID and section name, you can find the section. From the section, you can get the instructor ID, then get the instructor name. Okay, so what this requires is for us to join the registration table also to the section table. Although we are not displaying any information from the sections table, we still need it to get to the instructor name. Okay, so the broad steps are going to be like this. We join the registration table with the student table to get the student name, join it with the section table to get the instructor ID, then join with, uh, with the instructor table to get the instructor name. Okay, now the interesting thing that this query illustrates for us is the join of registrations with sections involves us to join both the columns. Till now, we've been looking at only table joinings with one column being joined. But here we need to join these two tables on both the columns because that's what will connect the registration to the appropriate section. You cannot just join on course ID or section name. For example, you can't join uh, the course number 10 section name AA to course number 10 section name AB. No, you have to connect 10 AA to 10 AA. 10 AB, you have to connect to 10 AB. Okay, so that's the important part here. So it's that's the new thing that this is illustrated. So putting all that together, first take a look at the joins, right? So in the joins, because there are no outer joins, the order of the tables doesn't really matter. So you've got the tables that we talked about. You've got registrations, you've got sections, then you've got courses and instructors and students for all the joins. Okay, so and for each one I've given an alias. Now the important thing to look at is how registrations and sections are joined. Right? So you see here joined registrations are sections has already been mentioned. Joined registrations are on R dot course ID equals S dot course ID and R dot section name equals S dot section name. Okay. This is a part we have not seen before. That is in the join condition having something and something. That is something we've not looked at so far. But this may be required when you're joining some tables on multiple columns, this may be required. So that's what I'm trying to illustrate with this query. Okay, so that was one interesting query. Now let's take a look at another query that shows something uh, which is interesting as well. So if saying for each course, list the course name and number of sections offered. Okay. This we've already done before. We did this before in one of the earlier queries. But now we are adding a twist saying for courses that have no sections, show the number of sections as zero. Okay. Now we have done this sort of thing before. That is, we've done outer joins to find cases where there are no matches. But when it comes to outer joins with counting, then there comes a small twist. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so this is our schema. We are saying for every course, it's the course name and number of sections offered. So clearly we are going to join the courses table and sections table. And we are saying for courses with no sections, show the number of sections as zero. Well, we are then going to do an outer join. If we list courses first, then our join will be courses left join sections. And clearly we are going to join the two field, two tables on the course ID field. Okay, so there's nothing really surprising about all of these things. These are all things we've looked at earlier. So we've got courses C sections S left join on C dot course ID equals S dot course ID. This is what we're going to do. 
that's fine okay so courses c left join sections s on c dot course id equals s dot course id this gives us this okay so we've taken every section the section table actually is on the right hand side you've taken every section and we've joined it with the course table on the course id okay now why do these nulls crop up here the nulls crop up because there are two courses course number 20 and course number 50 which don't have any corresponding sections okay those courses are not being offered so there are no sections but since we have done a left join those courses still appear in our result with all section related details as null okay so that's because we did an outer join so therefore we can see clearly that there are two courses without any sections because of what we just discussed that's fine okay so if we use this query to count the number of sections if we use this particular join to count the number of sections as we would count it earlier then the query might look something like this select course name count star from courses c left join sections s etc etc group by course name okay this looks like this should do the job for us but there's a small twist if you run this query then the result you get is this okay notice how these two things with nulls right life of russian self-actualization etc and masterpieces of middle chinese whatever right those two did not have corresponding sections so their count should actually appear as zero whereas in the result we are seeing that their count appears as one okay now that seems odd but it's actually not odd it's working the way it's supposed to work because of how count star behaves count star simply counts the number of rows for a situation okay so we are saying group by course name well for this course name there is one row for this course name there is still one row in the joined result okay therefore count star is coming out as one because count star simply counts the number of rows that are returned okay so that is why count star is not going to do the job for us in this particular case okay so whenever you're doing an outer join and then you want to count count star is going to give you this kind of a bad result okay that's because count star by its nature counts the number of rows instead what we want is to count the number of non null values on the other table the non outer joined table okay so let's look at what we do here so this we this is what we did and this is what we got with both of these things should not be there. They should be as zero, but it's not come out as zero because there is one row. Instead, what we could do is count explicitly on a particular column. Okay. We are saying count S dot course ID. If we just jump back to the previous slide and take a look at what S dot course ID is going to be. Well, this is the section part of the table. This is the course. This is the section part. So we are saying count s dot course id. We could have said count s dot section name or count s dot instructor id. Doesn't matter. Anything, any column that is not in the outer joined table, which is courses. Okay. So we are saying count for me s dot course id or s dot section name. Okay. So when you count explicitly on a specific column then what count does is count behaves differently it counts the number of non null values that exist okay it when it counts it leaves out the null values okay now count star on the other hand counts the number of rows even if there are some null values the row is going to get counted okay so that is why count star gave us a row count of 1 for each of these whereas when we use a course uh, count a specific course id or we could have used a section name or we could have used instructor id any of the columns in the sections table not in the courses table because that's what we are left joining with so all the values of courses will always come 
right? So here we want to just count on some particular field on the sections table, then you'll find that since it's null for all of those uh, for these two courses, you'll get the count of zero as we want. Okay, so that's an interesting thing for you to carefully observe what is going on. Okay, so now we got the correct results in this particular case. Okay, so here I'm just trying to explain what happened with count and count star. So the difference in the query that gave the correct result is that we said instead of count star, we said count and we gave a particular field. Okay, in fact, as I've already pointed out, you didn't have to say count s dot course id. You could have counted any of the columns in the student table. Not in the course table because course is the one we are doing outer join and therefore all of its elements will appear. But from the other table, since we're going to have some nulls, we'll just count any particular column and the null values will not be counted and therefore your counts will come out correct. Okay, so pay close attention to what I've discussed in, in this slide, uh, in, this, in this particular problem. Okay, so the difference between count star is count star counts the number of rows and count of a particular field counts the number of non-null values for that field. Okay, that's the interesting thing. So when you're doing an outer join and when you're doing counting along with the outer join, you have to be careful to use explicit column names in the count. If you simply set count star, then you're going to get wrong results.